Um, hey. sorry, Mr. Liu. Who's Cali Kalinda? Kalinda? Um, yeah. Kalinda. Kalinda is the training officer for 304. Okay. Mr. Liu, sorry, double checking. You hear me yes. fine? Perfectly. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Hello, Commissioner Valentine, sir. How are you doing? Very good, Richard. How are you this evening? Oh, doing very well, thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. Yim. Good to see you. Hello, good to see you. Hey, Frederick. Hi, Divik. Hello, Mr. Yim. Hello, Mr. Valentine. Hello. Hi, Leanne. Hi, how are you? Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Good evening, everybody. Hello, Mr. Moore. How are you? Hi, Hi Jeff. Very well. It's nice to be with you all. How are you doing, Jeff? Good to see you. Hi, David. I'm doing very well. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Lowe. Good evening. Hello, Ms. Framet. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Good to see you. It's great. Hello, Coco. Yep. Good evening, Mr. Liu. And Mr. Chow, I see is just Hello. joining us as well. How are you doing? Hello. Good. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, as a reminder, if we can please uh, update your names, if you are members, with your rank, first initial, and your last name, please. Thank you. Yeah, those were nice blue pajamas that you got. Thank you. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll let... Uh, Superintendent uh, Chow of our cadet division and uh, Mr. Ahazadeh uh, of our adult division in Burnaby to just kind of quickly introduce themselves and then we'll go around the room as we usually do. Great, thank you, uh, Mr. Liu. Hi, I'm Raymond Chow, superintendent of the 389C in Burnaby. Um, I feel like I'm, we're becoming one big family because I've seen you guys so often now. I've uh, uh, grown accustomed to to seeing you every month or so so that's great uh, welcome hopefully you enjoy yourself tonight thank you hello everyone mr liu thank you mr chow thank you uh, i'm far hang ahead today i'm divisional superintendent for burnaby division 304 it's great to meet new faces and see familiar faces i uh, hope you all enjoy tonight thank you very much Thank you, Mr. Chow. Thank you, Mr. Ahadzadeh, for the quick introduction there of our Burnaby team. And uh, we'll go around the room uh, and as I see along the Brady Bunch screen here. Uh, so I see uh, right beside Mr. Ahadzadeh, our dynamic duo, uh, Ms. Huang and uh, Ms. Ho. Hi, my name is Eva. I'm the uh, division admin of officer. Uh, thank you, everyone, tonight. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our party. Um, I am the training officer of the Russian Train Night. Nice to seeing you again, or oh, first time. Thank you, uh, Corporal Chen. Hi, everyone. I am Corporal Carmen Chen. I am uh, from the Division 389 in the Burnaby branch. Thank you, uh, Corporal Ma. Good evening, everyone. My name is Corporal Ma, and it's lovely to see you all tonight. Thank you, Corporal Ma. Uh, Mr. Yim. Good evening. Thank you for the invitation. I'm the Lower Mainland Area Commissioner, uh, Frederick Yim. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yim. Uh, Mr. Mr. Valentine, Commissioner Valentine, sir. Good evening, all. It's good to see all these smiling faces again. And uh, well, I'll, I'll save the rest for my welcoming remarks. Sounds good. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'd like to also now welcome uh, the new Honorary Brigade Division President for UBC, uh, Mr. Moore, Jeffrey Moore, if you want to quickly introduce yourself. Thank you, Richard. Uh, a profile has been circulated, but I just want to say to each and every one of you how proud I am to be with you this evening. Uh, in the few weeks that I've been involved with St. John, uh, People have been very, very generous with their time, their advice, information, their kindness, and I'm just grateful for that. I, I do want to acknowledge Richard. Thank you for your invitation tonight. That's very kind. David, uh, 
Valentine, uh, maybe I shouldn't be using first names, but we'll get into the protocol in, in, in due course. But David, thank you for uh, cementing this for me and also to Frederick Yim. And I can't end my comments without a shout out to Herman Ho, who I understand is retired, but uh, he was the person who was so instrumental in bringing me on. Uh, my background is for 31 years, I've been uh, Honorary Consul General of El Salvador. I'm Honorary Deputy Chief of Vancouver Fire Department. And now I'm here with you as well. And I promise you with your help and your advice and your support, we will be better with me being here. That's certainly my objective. So thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Moore, for the introduction. Uh, I see beside uh, Mr. Moore is new member in brackets, A. Curtis. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Curtis. I'm a new member of Division 740 out of Kelowna. And so this is my first uh, meeting. Well, welcome, uh, Mr. Curtis. Uh, Ms. Froment. Good evening, everyone. Um, yep, yeah, name's Celine Froment. I'm the Area Administration Officer for Lower Mainland Fraser Valley. Um, thanks again to the Burnaby Divisions for setting this up again. I do look forward to this every month. So I'm glad you guys are, are keeping this going. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Ms. Froment. Uh, Mr. Lowe. Hello, my name is Anthony Lowe. I'm the NCO Development Officer at Division 389. Uh, welcome everybody again. Uh, hope you have a good evening tonight. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Corporal, yeah, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Corporal Yip from Division 389. Thank you, Corporal Yip. I see Ms. Uh, Kwan. Hi, everyone. I'm Ms. Gabby Kwan. I'm from the Provincial Cadet Team. I'm part of the Community Events Team, um, just helping the uh, cadets running events for the Lower Mainland. Thank you, Ms. Kwan. Right beside her is Felipe Gallego. Hi, folks. I'm Felipe Gallego. Um, I'm from Division 304. Nice to meet you all. Well, welcome, Ms. Gallego. Um, I see the A. Shing. Uh, my name is Elvin Shing. I'm with Burnaby Division 304. Nice to meet you all. Well, welcome, Mr. Shing. Okay. Oh, there's a next. There's a next page. Okay, here we go. Uh, Rahul. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm coming from this community services and fund development here at St. John Ambulance, British Columbia. Nice to see you all. And I'm looking forward for this session. Back to you. Thanks Rahul, welcome back. Um, right beside him is Leanne. Hello everyone, happy to be here again. Thanks Richard for all the great uh, work you're doing here. Just an FYI, I have blue pajamas on. Yes, I do. However, I'm icing my knees. I have a bit of a, a knee injury. So Raul can attest to me, I'm fairly professional at work. I do not run around with blue pajamas. So just, just so everybody knows. <laughs> David, <laughs> make sure David knows. <laughs> Anyways, happy to be here. Really looking forward to the, um, the evening. And uh, yeah, just uh, rock and roll. Let's go. Thanks, Leanne. Welcome back and uh, get well soon with an EA. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right beside Leanne is Corporal Butler. Good evening, everyone. I'm Corporal Sarah Butler from Division 389. I look forward to hearing from Mr. It's tonight. Thank you, Corporal Butler. And uh, right beside Corporal Butler, I see a Tony T. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Tony Sang to, uh, in Burnaby. Welcome, Mr. Tang. Hey, Leticia, is that you over there from uh, Asian Heritage Month? Sorry. Oh, they, oh, it is. There you are. Hi. Thank you for the invitation. I'm Leticia Sanchez from the Vancouver Asian Heritage Month Society. I'm a community partner. And thank you to Richard for the invitation. Well, welcome, uh, Leticia. It's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, uh, so as in uh, tradition, before we uh, kick things off, we'd like to take a virtual group photo. Um, so if you want to kind of keep your cameras on and uh, look straight forward, and we'll do a couple of uh, screenshots 
All right, so just keep on looking because we're gonna have a couple pages to go through here. So <laughs> three, two, one. Well, thank you very much for your patience there as we do this technical virtual photo group photo. Hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to do these group photos in actual, in person. So, um, okay, so thank you. Let's begin the official program, uh, Mr. Ahadzadeh. Good evening, happy Lunar New Year, and welcome back to another exciting speaker series. I hope you are all well. I'm Farhang Ahadzadeh, Divisional Superintendent for Adult Division 304, based here in Burnaby, BC. Before we begin, I invite the officers to keep their headdress on Remain seated and everyone to please keep your mics muted, especially when our special guest is speaking. If you have any questions, please raise your digital hands. Thank you. I would like to now invite Mr. Richard N. Liu, our Honorary Brigade Division President, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Ahad, today. If you haven't seen our previous events, you can find them all on our growing YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button down here and hit that bell up there to be notified when we post new videos. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge and recognize that our division is proudly based here in this very diverse city of Burnaby, which is located on the ancestral and unceded homelands of the Coast Salish. We are grateful for the opportunity to present the speaker series on this shared territory tonight. As we are in the middle of the Lunar New Year, allow me to wish you all a happy Lunar New Year of the Ox. Salamat Tahun Baru, Chukmang Namoy, Sahibok Mani Pudaseo, Gonghe Fatoy, Gongshi Fatai, Shinti Jen Kang, Xin Chun, Kuala, Niochi, Chung Tian. Mr. Chow, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Raymond Chow, and I'm the Divisional Superintendent of St. John Ambulance, Cadet Division 389, sorry, C. We are based in Burnaby, located right next door to Vancouver. As our Honorary Brigade Division President so eloquently shared, it is still the Lunar New Year Festival. So let's begin with the many warm messages, starting with our interim CEO, Mr. Ken Lagat. Uh, followed by our three levels of government. Then we are pleased to present a pre-recording of the Vancouver Police Pipe Band playing Mo Li Hua. Jasmine Flower to help us safely ring in the Year of the Ox with a Scottish flair. Good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to see everyone back for another great speaker series to continue our great start to 2021. I'd love to begin by wishing everyone a healthy and happy Lunar New Year of the Ox. I hope it's a positive and prosperous year for you all. I'd like to take this opportunity to send my greetings to Mr. Richard Liu, the Honorary Brigade Division President, and everyone from our Burnaby Division crew for putting together this wonderful virtual event and the many virtual events prior. This is a great way to start off 2021 and the Lunar New Year for everyone. Now finally, I'd also like to welcome Mr. Nehemith, who is a member of the Order of St. John and a dedicated team member to us in many ways. Now during his time with us, Mr. Ip has demonstrated inspiring work and has put in so much of his own time towards his passion of community service and health and wellness. And again, thank you, Richard, for the opportunity to give these welcoming words. On behalf of the Senate of Canada, I'm delighted to extend my warmest greetings to all those attending the virtual St. John Ambulance Spring 2021 Speaker Series. I'd like to wish all of you a very happy Lunar New Year. Tehe Pok Mani Padaseo, Xin Yang Guai Le, Gong Hei Fa Choi, Chuck Mung Namoi. 2020 was a challenging year for all of us, but it also showed the strength determination and compassion of Canadians. As we begin this new year, the year of the white or metal ox, we are filled with hope and renewed vision for what the year will bring. Lunar New Year is an important celebration for 
for many Canadians of Asian descent and for everyone. The origins of Lunar New Year date back thousands of years. They are deeply rooted in tradition and represent Asian cultures and heritages at their core. In every Asian celebration, families gather to pay respect to their elders and reconnect with extended family, friends and community. The Chinatown Spring Festival didn't take place this year and families and communities weren't able to gather. But fortunately, we can do so virtually as you are doing now. Stay strong in spirit and stay safe. Happy Lunar New Year, everyone, and best wishes for good health and prosperity in the year ahead. Hi everyone, Terry Beach here, your Member of Parliament for Burnaby North Seymour. I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone in our community a very happy Lunar New Year. As we ring in the Year of the Ox, we celebrate hard work, honesty, and perseverance, characteristics we as Canadians are displaying across the country as we continue to fight this pandemic together. Although Ravi and I would have loved to bring our daughters, Nova and Solar, to join us at our eighth visit to the Lunar New Year Parade downtown, or to our favorite events at Lougheed and Brentwood, uh, we'll all be celebrating a little differently this year. Please celebrate safely and best wishes in the year ahead. Chini and Kwaila, Gaokhae Fachwai. Doja Hao. Hi, I'm Jigmeet Singh, leader of Canada's New Democratic Party. I want to wish you all a happy new year. San Li Fai Le, Xin Yin Le. Happy New Year of the Ox. I wish you all peace, prosperity, and good fortune. Ni men hao, Doja Hao. Wo shi Ju Li Min. Hi, I'm Peter Julian, Member of Parliament for New Westminster Burnaby, wishing you the very best of the Lunar New Year, mass prosperity and good health in the Year of the Ox. Xie xie. Hello, my name is Raj Chohan, MLA for Burnaby Edmonds and the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia. To all those in Burnaby Edmonds celebrating Lunar New Year, I wish you a prosperous and joyful year of the ox. The ox symbolizes hard work, positivity, and honesty. This year, let's embrace the grounded nature of the ox as we welcome a more stable and positive 2021. Gang he fat choy, Hi everyone! I'm so delighted to be here today at this wonderful speaker series event to share and celebrate the Year of the Ox. This year has been filled with many challenges, but as a community, we have embodied the characteristics of the Ox. Oxen are known for their diligence, dependability, and determination. And St. John Ambulance, you have demonstrated your strong ox characteristics with your continuous effort of being the backbone of our community. You have provided with the much needed community training and assistance to keep all of us safe and healthy during the pandemic. Thank you so much for your contributions. I am hopeful that in this new year, the Year of the Ox will provide us with renewed hope, continued health, and promises of a brighter tomorrow. Even though I cannot be in person to greet you today, I would like to wish everyone a happy and harmonious new year from my families to yours. My name is Janet Rutledge, and I'm the MLA for Burnaby North. And I'd like to wish everyone in the Burnaby Division of St. John Ambulance a very happy Lunar New Year. I wish you all the best in the Year of the Ox, and may we all be inspired by the Ox's example of hard work, prudence, and loyalty. Let's all pull together like oxen as a team to get through this pandemic. Xin yin kuai le, gong hei fa choi. Hi everyone, this is Katrina Chan, MLA for Burnaby Lohi, BC's Minister of State for Child Care. I am very grateful to have the opportunity to wish you all a happy Lunar New Year. While it is too bad that we're unable to gather together to celebrate this very special occasion, I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and healthy. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank all the volunteers and organizers of St. John Ambulance for your many contributions to our local community as always. Thank you, and I hope you have an amazing year ahead. Best wishes. Hi there. My name is Mike Hurley, 
and am mayor of the city of Burnaby. On behalf of Burnaby City Council, I would like to wish everyone a happy new year. We have so much to look forward to this year, but as we celebrate Lunar New Year, let's all make sure to follow our public health guidelines in order to keep our community safe. May this new year bring you, you your friends, and your families health, happiness, and prosperity. Gong hai fa choi, gong si fa chai. Thank you for all the festive messages and to the Vancouver Police Pipe Band for that wonderful performance. Gong hei, gong hei. The band performed this back in 2017 when it was safe to gather and travel. We thank the VPD for giving us the opportunity to celebrate the Lunar New Year and to bridge cultures by sharing their performance with us this evening.
I would like now to invite Commissioner Valentine to welcome and introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Ip. Commissioner Valentine, sir. Thank you, Superintendent Chow. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I'm not gonna be as, uh, as fluent in Chinese as uh, some of the previous speakers, but Gong Hei Fa Choi. As we enter the Lunar New Year of the Ox, <clears throat> I can only hope that this year is going to be much more healthy and prosperous for everyone than the last year has been. It has been a challenge. And I can tell you that I have never been so impressed with St. John people as I have been in this past uh, 14 months as we've moved forward through times that we never expected to have. We have been actively participating in so many things and these virtual sessions, again, are incredibly rewarding and enjoyable to all. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, for also welcome uh, Mr. Jeff Moore as the new Honorary Brigade Divisional President of the EBC Division and greetings to my uh, Area Commissioners Frederick and Steve, and hello to Jane, Leanne, Raul, <clears throat> and Ken, if he was here. I have had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Ripp for uh, quite a while. Back in 2007, I think we, uh, we worked together uh, at the very first Down Syndrome uh, run walk up and down that wonderful hill to SFU University. And he and I provided first aid coverage for a number of years for the Down Syndrome Race Walk. And we also, at that time, were both working for BC Ambulance in different cities. And we crossed paths on a few occasions. And Mayhem now is, I don't know where he finds the time. I, I know how busy I am, but I'm not a minister. I'm not still working full time. And I am definitely, uh, only looking out at St. John and a few other things. So uh, it's, hard, it's hard to put into words the, all the things that Nahum has been involved in and the contributions he's made to the people of St. John and to British Columbians. He's a founding member of our uh, CIS team. And he now provides uh, advice and guidance to the current uh, CIS team. He is our uh, provincial chaplain for St. John Ambulance uh, Brigade BC in the Yukon. And on top of that, he uh, is a full-time paramedic with now BCHSA. HSA as opposed to BCAS when we were to working together. And I'm pleased to, uh, to introduce him as our speaker this evening. And I'm sure you are going to enjoy what Nahum has to share with us. I give you Nahum Ip. Uh, I just wanna make sure um, you can hear me. Everybody okay, give me a thumbs up. Excellent, thank you. I, I just want to mention something that uh, Mr. Commissioner have forgotten that we're both motorcycle riders. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we have our passion. And uh, it's a wonderful thing, by the way, it takes a, lot of, uh, takes a lot of stress away when you hop on the motorcycle and just let the wind takes you. It's, uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, I want to say, everybody, but no Lai Si Dao Loi today. Uh, I am not giving nobody Lai Si. I am poor, I am going to school full time, and uh, I have to raise a family of five. Three of them are 20 years old to 16 years old, and they are still uh, staying in the house, eating a lot of my food. So sorry, no Lai Si for you guys. But if you wanna support me financially in raising all my children who are still at home, feel free to contact me and I'll send you my, uh, my PayPal information. Thank you very much. Uh, secondly, um, I, some of you have taken the survey that I, um, I have put out 
last week. And uh, I wonder how many of you are interested in taking a look at that. Should I just go through it very quickly? Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's not particularly uh, difficult to figure out. Uh, most of the answers were expected. But nevertheless, I was asking, thinking about today, how stressful was your day? So most people put down, not too bad, I'm mildly stressed. And the second question was, uh, what are your top stressors today? You can choose up to three. And uh, I am assuming many of you are still going to school because uh, school came out number one and work came out number two. And out of all those three that you, cho you chose, uh, what was the number one thing that causes the most stress? And uh, most of you said school. I agree. By the way, I'm taking statistics right now. I have four statistic courses I have to take. I'm only taking number two. I'm seriously struggling. And uh, at my level of studying uh, uh, on the graduate level, uh, you are expected to get 90% or higher. Uh, just so you know, the first quiz I took five weeks ago, I got 20%. And I was about to uh, drop out of the course. But we don't give up, right? We study. So I wrote my prof and I asked uh, if he can help me out because statistic is just not my uh, forte. But he put a lot of um, encouragement on me. And that's one of the things I'm going to talk about. It's not just to deal with stress by yourself, but to ask for help, right? And to flip a coin then, what relaxes you most? So most people are saying, I like to be alone. I like to watch TV, watch movies, and or YouTubes. That's very interesting because uh, not a whole lot of um, people wanting to go outside and be with other people. <clears throat> and lastly, do you do these uh, activities often? And uh, yes, by far, everybody say I relax this, I do relaxing activities on a daily basis, which is very encouraging to know. So anyways, uh, I want to say thank you for filling those out because it, it's very revealing about who we are, uh, what we do, and what we do to uh, make ourselves a little uh, less stress. Now, I'd like to share with you today uh, about stress in particular because uh, I was asked to do a presentation on uh, on critical incident stress. But if I may have your permission, I'd like to just broaden that a little bit more. And I'd like to talk about stress management in general. And uh, that would be helpful. And the second thing is uh, realizing we have a very wide range of people, ages, maturity, and uh, some of us are working, some of us are in school. Uh, I'm just going to take it a little easier on my storytelling. And uh, as you, if you have taken AMFR courses, you know I love telling stories. Uh, but some of the stories are a little, uh, may not be uh, appropriate for all ages. So I have to apologize ahead. I'm going to dial it down a little bit and uh, we'll make it more appropriate for everyone. <clears throat> I have no conflict of interest, so I'm going to declare that right away. Uh, for doing what I'm doing. Uh, Nahum is my name, as you already know. I started with St. John in my, back in 1997 as an instructor in Prince George, and I joined the brigade in 1999. So uh, I've been uh, doing all kinds of work, uh, like uh, area training. I have done some chaplain work uh, before I became the provincial chaplain. I have done a lot of CIS work. I have done about 10 years worth of CIS work uh, in St. John. Very happy to tell you, I started out by myself. I was the only sole member and now we got a, a team of seven, which is great. Uh, I also work for St. John Ambulance, uh, which, sorry, uh, BC Ambulance, which brings a lot of very interesting uh, experience into my life. And I absolutely love what I do. And uh, um, my claim to fame, uh, I'll share with you a little later. But uh, if you become uh, a paramedic, you get to do a lot of things. Uh, some of them were exercises. 
and you get to know a lot of people. So for the last five years, I was the manager for Richmond and Vancouver. Uh, I recently uh, demoted myself uh, back to a frontline uh, paramedic position just so that I can finish my studies because I just can't really be a manager and do studying at the same time. But as a manager, I was able to uh, manage uh, uh, to run a lot of exercises. Uh, this one you're seeing here, it's the YVR exercise. We have exercises with uh, Metro Vancouver. Uh, we have exercises with Metro Town. We have done Port of Vancouver. We have done transit. Uh, we have uh, been exercising with the RCMP at UBC. Uh, we have done terrorists. We have done shooters. We have done floods. Uh, we have done it with the Coast Guard. And all those experiences are just immense. And being able to put a name to a face when it, when it comes time for a disaster, it's just so much easier to communicate and coordinate between different agencies. I was one of the three people that were able to get up on the plane uh, to receive the Canadian uh, repatriating from Wuhan. Uh, last year, around this time actually, uh, we received a total of three planes, two are Canadians and one an American plane trying to help us out uh, so giving some space to the Canadians and uh, being able to uh, knock on the door on the plane and ask, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Canada uh, was an honor for me. And uh, as you know, in the introduction, I also love photography and aviation. Uh, this is really boring for a lot of people, but I love standing by the uh, Richmond Post, uh, Canada Post uh, by the airport, there is a little hill there. I can stand there for three, four hours just watching planes take off and land. And I love taking pictures as well. As you can see, some of these are wildlife from Africa. Uh, I volunteer with my family for the last 10 years. Uh, every other year, we go to Africa to uh, volunteer at an orphanage. And uh, as you can see, my daughter's face was being, uh, being painted on the left side. And uh, just love photography. And both of my... Uh, Two of my kids are in soccer as well, so I get to do some uh, uh, sport photography as well. So <clears throat> what is stress? Stress is, stress is very simply de defined as the response of a bodily and or mental tension to situations around us. One thing I want to emphasize is stress is actually a normal reaction to life's challenges. It is something that we are going to have and we always have. And it's something that we probably have to deal with instead of trying to brush off. But the earlier you learn how to deal with stress, the better your life it's going to run. Do you know the signs of stress? And short term or long term? And just to give you an example, what if you uh, have an assignment due? You have an assignment due tomorrow. You were given five weeks to do it. But like a normal person, you waited till the last day. And now you're working on your assignments. If you are, say, at your home in your room studying, and your parents, either your mom or dad or some or guardian came in and say, hey, can you help me with some dishes? And you know this assignment is due tomorrow and you know it's gonna take 24 hours to do, and you only have 12 hours, how would you respond to your, to the request of doing dishes? So some of us would get pretty agitated and they'll probably turn around and snap at uh, say our mom. And uh, you would say, I don't wanna do it. I'm very busy, leave me alone, close the door. Okay, that's good. The second thing is when you know you are in a lot of trouble, you tend to be self-neglect, meaning you will forget to eat, you will forget to shower, you forget to drink, you forget to look after yourself. Self-confession time. When I did my undergrad thesis, I had an entire year to do it. And this turkey waited till the last week before I had to hand it in. And I spent seven days straight, no showers, no, uh, no laundry, wearing the same clothes, 24 hours a day trying to get these thesis done. Now, it may sound really dumb, 
and you can laugh at me, you have permission to laugh at me, but really watch it because when you're under that kind of stress, personality change. Sometimes you're under so much stress, you will have anxiety. You will become withdrawn and you don't talk to people and you become self-neglect. And then when you know you, it will take 24 hours to do a homework and you only have 12 hours, you become hopeless. Now, how are you going to deal with that when you have stress like that? Possible signs and symptoms of stress, being too stressed. As stress progress and if you accumulate all this stress and you don't deal with them so that you lower back the stress level, then we're going to start having things that are affecting us, not just emotionally, but physically and psychologically as well. So what are some of them physically? Uh, stomach ache, it's a big one. Sleeplessness is another big one. Uh, sometimes either diarrhea, constipation. Uh, remember we talked about personality change, sometimes emotionally change, you become a little bit more irritable and uh, more rude and you're not so patient with people. Uh, we have um, not only that, but you get so frustrated sometimes at yourself that you will beat yourself up for. So really watch for that kind of stuff. Here's some stories for physical change. At the uh, St. John Ambulance Annual Inspection, we always have a team of first aid people. Do you know why? Because I guarantee you, there will be 10, 15 of you out of 500 will be standing there and all of a sudden collapse. Now there are different reasons for it. Some of them were just, you didn't eat enough uh, for the day because you're, you're burning energy like crazy when you stand in attention, trust me, you do. So eat a big breakfast before you come to AI. You know, otherwise you're gonna faint. Uh, it could be uh, mostly guys does that, they lock their knees and they cut off circulation so they faint. Or uh, you are just not used to standing like that. So uh, there is uh, again, circulation issues. But I remember being a first aid team, going up to people that fall down and they collapse. What is the first thing they say to you? I'm okay, I'm okay. They're obviously not okay. They are on the ground, they are half conscious and they're saying to you, I'm okay, I'm okay. But they're not. That's something we need to watch for. As a, as a pastoral counselor and, be, and training to become a training uh, trauma counselor, when somebody say they are okay, they are usually not. So that's my cue. Physically, falling, it's a sign of stress because you're putting stress into the body. Secondly, when you have a common cold at home, you are just miserable. You have a headache, you're shaking, you're sneezing, you're coughing, and you're just generally miserable. What does that to you, do to you emotionally or personality-wise? You are not as patient, you're not as nice, and uh, you just want somebody to pamper you. You want a hug from someone you love, or you want somebody to do your dishes for you, or make some meals so that you can just rest. And those are the physical effect, effect of stress. So long-term wise, if you don't watch yourself, <clears throat> as I said, as you, your stress increases, it might hit you physically, emotionally, and psychologically. And we talked about all three of them. Oh, actually psychologically, I hadn't talked about. It could cause anxiety, sometimes depression, uh, sometimes uh, other uh, psychological illnesses will come up. In particular, uh, PTSD, we talked about PTSD, which means, uh, which stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD is the buzzword right now in, uh, in our society. Lots of people talk about it. And while we're talking about it, it's probably worth sharing with you some of the uh, statistics that we got. In a study that the government of Canada put out back in 2016, we discover Canada was ranked number two country in the world that has the most PTSD people. Now, we're looking at Japan, for example, 
is 0.4%. 0%. Now, Japan, the country of Japan, it's considered a very stressful society, very stressful culture. They, they usually work six day weeks and you are supposed to be married to your work. So you neglect your family to work. Loyalty is very important. And uh, even that they have a very low PTSD rate. Now looking at South Africa, 0.6%. South Africa has one of the highest unemployment rates in any developed co countries. So they are around 25 to 26 percent unemployment. One in four people have no jobs. And yet they have a 0.6 percent of PTSD rate. Yet Canada is at 1.7. That's double of Europe. Now we're not as bad as the US. US is by far double of everybody's and triple or quadruple. I don't know what they do down there, but it's pretty crazy. Uh, but Canada is still ranked number two. Now, why is that? And when we break it down to profession, we realize uh, paramedics, which is first respond, which are first responder type medical first responders are at 26% solid solid. It's consistently showing up at one in four paramedics have PTSD, whereby the police, depending on which department you work for, anywhere from eight to 32 percent. Now, the RCMP, unfortunately, it's on the higher side for PTSD. But if you work for, say, VPD, they have one of the lowest rates. They have one of the best police uh, organization to work for. Some of the more um, Surprising when uh, the correction uh, officers, correction officers are averaging around 24% as well. And we have figured out why since then, but nobody could figure out why the paramedics have such stressful jobs. Uh, we have some guesses, but nobody knew what the uh, truth is. Now, for those who are in statistics, if you do a set score test and, uh, and take the uh, samples and expound it to the population, uh, we came to an estimate. Adult population in Canada, uh, around 9.2% of getting PTSD, so about 10%. The military has dropped ever since Afghanistan was done. Uh, when they returned from Afghanistan, uh, it used to be 25%, but it's now down to eight. Police officer are up to uh, 32%. But first responder, again, it's around 12 to 23. But one very interesting that we hadn't paid attention to, this time around, they actually started studying volunteer first responder, which St. John Ambulance fall under. They have it up to 23% of medical first responders having p possibility of PTSD. So this is, this is very serious. And that is what, why we have a critical incident stress team. And based on our experience, now we have to keep privacy and confidentiality. So I can't really share with you what we've been dealing with, but we have been dealing with some very serious cases uh, while on duty and also off duty. And some of them require uh, uh, close to requiring professional help. But we've been very uh, fortunate that we didn't have to go to that place yet. And most of the people after a diffuse and a debrief <clears throat> were able to carry on with their life. But something that we need to pay attention to with volunteer first responders, that's us. So what is critical incident stress then? Critical incident stress is what overwhelms a person's normal coping mechanism. Meaning if you're under stress, you're able to at least organize yourself and say, okay, this is these are the stuff I need to do to, to get de-stress. For example, oh, I need to go and ride a bike. I need to go run. I need to go eat some Chinese food, of course. Chinese food is always very distressful. So thank you. And Japanese maybe. <clears throat> uh, but it can be one incident or it can be a cumulative stress. Critical incident stress may hit you all at once or it may uh, hit you accumulatively, and then one incident would push it over. Now, we have dealt with some pretty crazy stuff at St. John, but I'll give you three of those stories. Two of them are positive. 
Uh, the cadet officer, um, we had a cadet officer that uh, witnessed somebody fell on the street. An elderly gentleman probably tripped and fell, we call it a mechanical fall, instead of passing out to fall. And she was able to immediately run up to, the, uh, to this elderly gentleman. And as every good first aider will bring with them a pair of gloves and, the, uh, and, uh, um, and a pocket mask, right? So she put her gloves on. Uh, the gentleman was quite bloody, uh, was able to put him into a, a recovery position after DABC RBS call ambulance and uh, able to monitor his um, vital signs, keep him awake, control some of the bleeding. When the ambulance arrived, gave an excellent report. Now, this is one week after she finished AMFR and was able to give all that and she did such a good job, the paramedic actually asked her, hey, are you a paramedic? Because you did a very good job giving a report and taking care of the patient. And, uh, and she said, no, I'm not, but I was trained by one, which is great because that gives St. John Ambulance a good name. And by the way, uh, when they asked her who your instructor was and they said, yeah, Nahum Ibn. Thank you, thank you. Brigade team at the Abbotsford International Air Show. When all the responders left at 4.30, the air show doesn't finish till five, but for some reason between four and 4.30, the firefighter leaves, the, uh, the uh, ambulance leaves, and the, uh, all the other first responders that are in the uh, central uh, command leaves. But at five o'clock, one of the planes trying to go home and crashed on takeoff. And guess what? St. John Ambulance had four ambulances there and three of them went out there. And because of that, every one of the passengers survived. And not only that, and because of one uh, team's uh, action with St. John, one of the first responder team, because of their action to able to slot the bleeding on a person's leg, he actually uh, survived. If the St. John Ambulance team were not there, he would have been dead for sure. Now, having said that, what's OCIS about that? What's the critical incident stress? Well, both of them are pretty traumatic stuff. And the point I'm trying to make is with this is when you are very competent with your skills as a first responder, critical incident stress can great, be greatly de re de reduced because you don't have to worry about what ifs. One of the big thing about first, uh, CIS is we always ask ourselves, have we done everything we could for somebody? What if I didn't do a good job? And when you have that kind of a doubt in your head, critical incident stress get worse. The last uh, example I'm trying to give is two cadets were at uh, were duty and treating an elderly lady with a headache. Both cadet members know that this person is sick, but the patient refused to have the ambulance call. So instead, after an hour back and forth, she finally agreed to call a taxi to go home. And she has a massive stroke inside the taxi. And after having do the diffuse and the debrief on this particular uh, situation with the two cadet members, one of the big things that came out of that was, man, I wish I was a little bit more uh, authoritative. I wish I take charge of the scene. I wish I forcefully call an ambulance. And both members were just quite remorseful. But I have to remind them, it's not your fault. The lady make a choice and she now have to live with the consequence of this choice. But did you provide good first aid? Yes. Did you good, do good paperwork? Yes. Did you try to convince her to go to the hospital? Yes, multiple times. Did you help her with the ambulance, or calling an ambulance? Uh, she said, yes, yeah, she keeps saying no, but I keep asking her. Then you have done your part and you should be proud of that instead of putting doubt in your head. So what are some of the ways to mitigate CIS? One of the things that uh, for, for St. John specific is having for proper first aid training and not only that, and be competent in what you are trained for. 
okay? So if you're taking standard first aid, if you're taking emergency first aid, if you're taking AMFR, doesn't matter. Be the best of a first aider you can be. That will take a lot of doubt off you and remorse later, okay? Stress inoculation, it's more of a uh, progressively exposing you to stress so that you learn how to deal with them as you are growing up or becoming more and more mature. Stress inoculation could be progressively adding more stress in you or giving you more and more examples to teach you how to prepare yourself when you deal with stress and when they come to you, you know how to uh, respond to it. Resilience is more like preventative. Resilience is teaching you to, uh, to how to be, uh, how to recover and bounce back a little easier and quicker. So uh, what is the difference between inoculation and resilience? Inoculation again is to give you more scenarios and exercises to help you learn to respond. Resilience is teaching you how to bounce back. And resilience are very important. It is important in the sense that if you don't learn it ahead of time, it is usually pretty stressful. Here's the word stressful to have to handle that when the situation comes and you don't know how to respond. Uh, one of the things that I have learned through my years of being a uh, CIS guy is that sleep hygiene is a big issue. The first thing that we lose after we went through a critical incident stress situation is that we lose our sleep. We forget to sleep or our head is in such an overdrive. You keep thinking over and over about the situation that causes sleep not to happen. So having good sleep hygiene, it's number one for us. Now, what do you mean by that? We know that if you are on the laptop or on your phone, the, the light from the phone or the laptop or the tablet or the iPad emit a large amount of blue lights, which signal to the brain that it's daytime. So before you go to bed, it is very not a good idea to be looking at an electronic device. In fact, some of the sleep experts would suggest that two hours before you go to bed, put away your electronic devices. Second thing, sleep hygiene is to set your room up for sleep. So a dark room, cool, make sure you don't do anything else other than sleeping uh, on your bed. So you don't play with your devices on the bed and stuff like that. Uh, have a ritual of some kind before you go to bed uh, my, my ritual is, it sounds really silly. Uh, I will sit in bed and I'll actually read, which I just went against my own advice three seconds ago. Uh, I read uh, aviation magazines and that's my signal to go to bed. And uh, I usually do it for about half an hour. Then I go to the washroom and I go to bed. Uh, some people will like a cookie or milk or uh, Chinese people, I don't know, have a Chinese neck, Dai Bak to Tong or something. <clears throat> Whatever signals you to go to bed, that's the way to do it. And uh, another signal that I have is I actually meditate. I close my eyes and, uh, and I just try to do a relaxing exercise and that uh, helps me as well. So whatever sleep hygiene that you want to utilize, that's fine. But the big one for our young people today it's electronic devices. See if you can discipline yourself not to play on the phone before you go to bed because that's gonna keep you up. For the gamers, gamers are bad by the way. Not gamers are bad, games are bad because that really stimulates your brain. You are trying to react so you're on high alert and you're trying to react to the games and you wanna get more points and you wanna be very good at what you do. And as you are that kind of an alert, it takes sometimes two to three hours to calm down. So if you don't uh, calm down before you go to bed, you're just gonna lay in bed like with that going over your head over and over again. Same thing for me, after a full day of work, I've seen some pretty crazy stuff today. 
if you're interested to know some of these stories, uh, take me out to lunch and we'll talk about it. Uh, then I get a free meal, that's why. And uh, anyways, uh, there was some pretty crazy stuff we saw. And uh, for me, in order for me to actually have a good rest, I need to go home and actually calm down for two, about two hours before I could do it. Lastly is diversifying your life. So don't put all your eggs in the one place. Have a variety of people that you get to know. Do a variety of things in the, uh, around um, your life. And uh, I know some of us are lifers with uh, St. John Ambulance. We spend a lot of hours uh, doing St. John volunteering. Thank you very much for doing that, by the way. We love volunteers. Please continue, and we appreciate you. At the same time, uh, let's find some other hobbies that can help us. Because if one day we no longer can do St. John and we have no other things that we could do, that really put us into a very bad position because we have nowhere else to go and nothing else to do. So that is why I, I'm a little crazy. So don't follow my example, do what I do. No, nope. do what I say, don't do what I do. But I, uh, I have a group of people from church that I, I meet every week and we keep each other accountable. I have friends from, uh, from SFU and also UBC that I constantly go to for advice. I'm still with St. John, so I have many friends there and I really appreciate your, you guys. Uh, I wanna put uh, a thank you out to uh, Garfield and to Eva. Uh, Garfield bugs me all the time to go for walks with him. Uh, she lives around Stanley Park now. It's beautiful to walk. So uh, it's really a, a very good thing when she texted me and uh, I, I can't help but to go out there and walk with her. So she's been helping me with exercises. Uh, so thank you. Um, and uh, and I, I also have a group of friends at work. So if any one of those things doesn't happen anymore, I have other people that I can go to as well. And worse come to worse, you can color yourself like the, like the cartoon and I'm sure it will distress you a little bit or maybe it'll cause more stress, I don't know. So what relaxes you? What relaxes you? I'm not asking you to just do exercises for the sake of doing exercise, right? Whatever relaxes you, go do it, okay? And some people like to go outside and, and run. Uh, by the way, going outside, it's a wonderful thing. If you have pets, uh, well, you can only walk your dogs. You cannot really have uh, walk a bird or something if you have pets. By the way, the general that is in charge of the mental health for the US Army, she was speaking at a, at a conference once and she said having a pet dog that you have to walk every day by far heal PTSD more than any other therapy combined. Having a, having a dog that is loyal, that loves you no matter what and loves you for taking them out to walk really soothe mental health, soothe the soul. It's a wonderful thing. So if you don't have a dog, get a dog. A cat, cat, it's a queen. You have to cater to the cat because she's the queen. But dog, dog just loves you. Uh, some people like to meditate. I meditate in the morning before I go to work. That really helps me because it set the tone for the day to be nice and calm and be nice. Uh, some people like to take a nap, but it comes back to a street, uh, sleep hygiene. Uh, take a nap for 15 minutes or shorter. Please don't do it longer because then it affects your sleep at night. Uh, some people like to listen to music and uh, there are some other ways to, um, to relax. I enjoy the museum. I enjoy going to museums tremendously and uh, that relaxes me and read about other people's history and stuff. So whatever that distresses you, do it. And don't be afraid to ask for help, especially our young people. Hey, are you doing okay? No, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, you're not. Don't be afraid to ask for help because we have all been there. And we would love to come alongside of you and help you just as much as you like to go help others, right? If you, and I bet you 99.9% .9 of us, if I ask for help today, you will jump in and help me. What makes it not okay then to help you? 
So we are a big family in St. John. If you need help, ask for help, whatever that may be. Sometimes we think, oh, it's too silly. I don't want to ask. It's okay. There is nothing silly about it. If you need help, you need help. If you just need somebody to give you a hug, by all means. But if you need advice on something else, ask, right? And uh, if you like a big teddy bear to hug you, I'm, I'm here. I'm pretty big. And I would love to just give you a hug if you need it. But if you want to take me out for a walk uh, to talk, by all means, we're here to help you. But if you need some advice with school or, or with work and you just want somebody to talk to that will keep confidence and not spill your beans and just to listen to you, by all means, we're all here to help each other. The second part of this is we also need to learn to extend our hands of help, right? Uh, the scriptures, uh, the Holy Bible said, encourage one another daily. Why don't we make it an, a point to thank somebody once a day? One of the practices that I have is I always thank my partner every day at the end of the shift. And if it was a good shift, I would say, partner, that was a good shift. Thank you very much. If it wasn't a good shift, I would say, partner, thank you very much for, for helping each other out. Like, I wish you well. And that goes a long ways. And uh, an illustration here is a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. You're not going to lose anything, except you're going to build somebody up. So encourage one another. Now, uh, this dog apparently is the most famous therapy dog in St. John Ambulance. He's really grouchy looking, but everybody loves him. And I forgot his name. So, uh, but anyways, I'm pretty sure if I Google it, I'll find out his name. That's why I put his, his, his uh, picture in there. But everybody loves him. The St. John CIS team exists to support the St. John family before, during, and after an incident. Before, we're gonna do some prevention by doing education. So we'll come to your uh, division and uh, gave us gave a, a talk about CIS. Uh, during the incident, we provide you with whatever support we need to do. So if we need to buy donuts and, and buy you juice and, and soft drink, that's all you need, that's what we're gonna do. But if you wanna to talk to somebody, we'll talk to you. And then we have post-incident follow-up such as diffuse, debrief, or just to give you a call to see how you're doing. So those are the things that we do. We, we uh, do about 60 uh, activation a year, about 60. Some of them are pretty crazy and some of them are fairly normal. So if you are running into trouble, say at school or at work, you just wanna talk to someone, we'll be more than happy to listen. Or if you just wanna hang out with someone out in the sun and just go for a walk, uh, and then talk a little bit about yourself, we'll love to be there too. So if you want to talk to someone who can keep secrets and uh, with, with exceptions, there are some exceptions that we cannot, uh, we cannot break, break the law for. But other than that, we will be more than happy to help you and, and to listen. Uh, you can give us a call and leave a message. Our coordinator will call you back within the hour, or at least we'll try. But all of us have work. So uh, we might have to wait till the end of the shift or may wait till uh, break time to call you. But uh, if you call us, we'll guarantee we'll call you back. We also have an email if you want to email us instead. Uh, and uh, we'll be trying, we're trying to get back to you as soon as we can, okay? But for now, for those who are more academically inclined and you want to see the references, these are my references. If you uh, like to know a little bit more about uh, uh, where I got some of this stuff from, uh, by all means, uh, just email me and, uh, and I'll send you the reference. So I'm just gonna entertain some of these uh, questions. Thank yeah. you for your very informative presentation. I'm the Divisional Training Officer from Division 3 in I Garfield Huang. Um, I think our cadet now is ready for some questions, to have some special questions for you as oh, a okay. surprise. So <laughs> um, please take this challenge from our NCOs. Okay, let's entertain that. And uh, uh, as paramedics, we don't like surprises. 
Oh, so but we are they, trained. We're trained to deal with surprises. Let's see what we have. That's great. Um, I believe Kopo Yip has our first questions. Please go oh. ahead, Kopo Yip. Um, good evening, Mr. Yip. I'm Corporal uh, Alana Yip. Um, I would, I believe this is also on your list, but um, I would like to ask, since you're supporting the flights from Wuhan, China, and just in general being a frontline worker during these times, what compelled you to step up while others, concerned for their own health or the health of the people they live with, halted things like school and fear of contracting COVID-19? Oh, very good question. I think, I think first responder is a very special breed. When everybody runs south, we head north. We don't run away from trouble. We like to run into trouble. So that is a very special kind of a personality. Not everybody likes that. But in my case, I was a manager when I went to went on the Wuhan flights, and Wuhan flights, and 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 shortly after, uh, I found myself in the office just doing office work, and actually that frustrates me. I want to be out in the front line to be with my people. I want to be with them when they are working their butts off and they are going through very dangerous situations, but. Um, just so you know, I, I was part of the author. I was the author of the uh, BC Ambulance uh, uh, SOPs, so Standard Operating Procedure for uh, for the COVID. So I, I wrote my um, I wrote my SOPs for the airport, and I submitted to BC Ambulance as well. And they took a hundred percent of my recommendation, and they changed it into a policy. And I'm very proud to say uh, the policy was so strict that only so far only one paramedic got sick with COVID out of 4,000 at work. There were a whole bunch of other paramedics that got uh, isolated or quarantined and or got sick outside of BC ambulance, but only one paramedic that we know of that got sick within uh, work. So we're pretty proud to say that. And, and, and what, what, we try, what I'm trying to say is we kept uh, everybody safe by having really stringent and, and very tough rules. In fact, I would like to say it is more dangerous for you to go to a restaurant or go to a supermarket than for me to go into a house with a patient with COVID because of the safety standards that we have. So I just dealt with one actually before I came on. And uh, I was very, very confident that I didn't get sick because uh, the way I clean, when they say to clean it once, I clean it twice. If they say to clean it twice, I clean it three times. And uh, I, I, uh, I make sure my ambulance is clean. I make sure my partner is safe. And therefore I'm not too worried about uh, all of that worries. Does that answer your question or any other um, comments? Um, yes, it does. I just found it really interesting how you said the um, first aiders run north when everyone else runs south. Um, thank you for your words. I believe Squad Leader Yu is next. Good evening, Mr. Yip. Uh, it was great hearing what you had to say. So my question for you is, like you mentioned about balancing between your education work and family and like, working and your passions like aviation and photography, how would you say you would prioritize each thing? Uh, uh, it's called dynamic tension. So I think it would be very naive for me to say, these are my priorities. And this is first, this is second. When I use the word dynamic tension, I mean that priority are constantly moving. For example, yesterday, I have a paper due at nine o'clock at night, which is midnight Eastern Standard Time. The paper has to be done. Now I'm fairly organized. I got it done by Friday already. Actually, I got it done Saturday afternoon. It was getting late. But my wife, uh, I usually get my wife to proofread. So it takes a little while, but I have to work yesterday. So at work that become my priority. 
But as soon as I got home at eight o'clock, no, it's due at nine. Uh, my wife got a whole bunch of questions for me and say, "Hey, this is not making sense. Hey, that's not making sense. How do we work it?" And uh, it it turned out I only had ten minutes uh, to go before I hand in my assignment. So that became my priority at that time. If my daughter said to me, "Hey, Dad, I got soccer a soccer game tonight, and nobody is driving me. Can you drive me?" That now become my priority. So. As you plan your day, plan it the best you can, and then when the dynamic tension comes in, then you have to change priority as you as you need to. One other thing that I like to say though, you have to be fairly disciplined. If you have a whole bunch of things coming at you, you have to be disciplined enough not to do certain things like watching TV, playing games. Talking to your friends or go on social media. So if I know I have to focus, Facebook is out,、uh, WhatsApp is out, texting is out. In fact, sometimes I have to put my phone away to do what I needed to do. So discipline is another key factor、uh, within that realm, and it really helps when you have no TV. To be honest,、uh, we got rid of our TV when my daughter was born. Twenty-two years ago, and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Any other questions, comments, comebacks?、Uh, none from my side. So thank you.、Uh, I believe it's Corporal Butler. Good evening, Mister. It.、Um, I am Corporal Sarah Butler. My question for you is: What is your? What would you say is your greatest accomplishment? That's a tough question.、Uh, I I never don't look at myself as accomplish anything.、Uh, my whole life is just wanting to serve people. And joining St John was a way to give back to the community. If I may change that wording a little bit, not greatest accomplishment, but to use the word honor instead. I'm honored to be a part of St John. I'm honored to be a paramedic with BC Ambulance. I'm honored to be a minister who have a very special set of skills that can go help others. And if 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 I may say I, if I may change the wording to say I am much better to say it that way than to say a greatest accomplishment. No, thank you very much. A、uh, good evening, Mr. Ip. I'm Squad Leader Chen. I'd like to ask, how are you able to distribute time towards your passions while being a part of so many big roles? <laughs> Don't do everything on by yourself. Always work as a team, right? And、uh, on things that you have to do it yourself, set yourself some time to do it.、Uh, one other thing that I do, it's sound really crazy. But I actually put my kids' needs into my calendar as a task to do. So if my daughter say, "Hey, Dad, I need to go on a soccer practice on Thursday," it goes on my calendar, and I set that aside. If my mom say, "Hey, I need you to come for dinner," that time it's my parents, and I set aside time. When Garfield said we're going for a walk. That goes in my calendar. We are going for a walk. And by the way, you talked about hot pot. So when are we going to have hot pot? So once I realize that I cannot fill those places, don't be afraid to say no as well. Okay. Now, for example,、uh, here is a here is a really good example.、Uh, one of the churches that I spoke at、uh, emailed me on Tuesday. Saying that, can you have the sermon and the recording ready by tonight? Now I got a paper due. I got a quiz to take. I have to prepare for this presentation. Richard will know,、uh, Mr. Liu.、Uh, I, I've been working on it、uh, for a few days now, and、uh, I actually make a recording of it two days ago to send it to him, just in case I, I can't show up. 
and and I and I and I know I have to work as well, so I cannot possibly do this. So do not be afraid to say, "Hey, I can't do it." So I email the church back and I say, "Can I hand this to you? I hand in to you in three days instead of Monday." The reason why I explained to her and I said the reason why is I can give you a haphazard sermon just to fulfill your deadline, or I can do a very good job. With three more days, would you like a haphazard work or would you like a really good work? And so she wrote back and said, "No problem. I would like some really good sermon for this Sunday." So no problem. And tomorrow is my night shift. I go to work at five. I go to bed at two、uh, before my night shift to rest. So I have an entire morning to myself. Then I can write this sermon, and then、uh, the next day I can review it and just just to make sure I got everything right. Then I will、uh, record it on the third day and submit it.、Uh, so do not be afraid to say no when you need to. Now, I used to be a manager with BC Ambulance. It's really prestigious. I get a, a, my own ambulance car to drive.、Uh, Mr. Valentine would know it's really cool, and you got pips on your shoulder. But I just cannot do that job and be at school at the same time. So I asked to come back on the front line. Which is unprecedented. I heard.、Uh, I, apparently, I'm the first one that went back full time, or able to go back full time as a as a manager, and、uh, and I got a thirty percent pay cut to do this, but it's okay because now I got time to study, and in three years I'll have my degree. Then I'm going to certify as a counselor. Then I have a second career on top of、uh, what I what what I do now. So you have to look at it on a on a、uh, on a long term basis. Sometimes you have to cut some of that so called prestige to accomplish your goal. So do not be afraid to say no. Do not be afraid to go backwards. Always seem to be going backwards, but you're not. And do not be afraid to to cut some of the stuff so that you have time to do things properly. Good evening, Mr. Ip. I am Corporal Chen, and I would like to ask you: Are there any other goals you would like to achieve in the future? Oh, you're not going to believe this. I would like to go to Disney World. And、uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of goals anymore per se, like like really big goals right now. What I need to do is not to dream about five years from now. What I need to do is accomplish what I need, what I have in front of me. I very much would like to finish my degree, which have another two and a half years to go. I just finished my first year. I got two and a half more years. This is now not the time to think about other big goals. But what I notice is every four to five years, I would like to do something different. So I just started my first year in the degree, so I can got another four years to go. So I need to calm down a little bit. And then another thing I needed to pay attention to is I have to schedule some lengthy rest time from school. So I may take a semester off next year. And when I take a semester off to rest,、uh, I would like to do something for me. I would like to go to Disney World and just have a few days to relax. Any of you interested? Let me know. We'll go together. The other thing I like to do, as I volunteer every,、um, uh, I see a few thumbs in here, thumbs up. That's great.、Uh, another thing I hadn't done this year is I am due to go back to Africa to volunteer at the orphanage. We didn't get a chance this year. I would like to go again, just to hold babies for three weeks, change diapers, bathe them, and just love them to death. It's very relaxing for me. So、uh, I would like to do that. So those are the two things: small goals, very simple, but relaxing. Thank you, Mr. Yip. Good evening, Mr. Ip. My name is Corporal Jaylee Ma, and my question for you tonight is: What are or slash were your proudest moments being the provincial chaplain of BC Yukon? 
Okay. So I only I have only been a chaplain since uh since August or, or July, right, Mr. Valentine? Uh so I have done two funerals and a wedding. In fact, some of the one of the person that I uh, I performed the marriage for it's here actually uh, with us right now, but I'm not gonna okay. Now you just identify yourself. So okay, I saw I I I performed the marriage of Ralph and and uh, his wife Maureen, and that was great. Um, so I've only done those things, and I have done a few uh, counseling sessions, if I may, or uh, CIS debriefs. Uh, those are confidential, so I cannot really share. <clears throat> but as a chaplain, my job is to be the eyes and ears for the commissioner, just to get an idea and a sense of what the front line is like and to report that to the, to the commissioner. And uh, I, I have been talking to a lot of members just to get a sense of how they're feeling right now, especially in the midst of COVID. If you want to talk about accomplishment, accomplishment my biggest goal right now is to provide some normalcy back to the brigade. We are not allowed to do that right now, which is quite sad, but it will bring me a lot of joy to provide some like one-on-one -on -one and face-to-face -face -to -face training again, and to be able to go out and do duties again. And uh, I know recently uh, Ministry of Health uh, came down with a new directive. So youth can gather again up to 50, so some of the churches are ramping up with the youth program now. And uh, I don't know if we know about that in St. John, but it sure will be nice for our youth to start gathering again and training again so that we can provide some sort of a normalcy. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, good evening, Mr. Ip. My name is Christopher Yu. And my question for you today is, uh, what is your favorite type of aviation? A very good question. I basically enjoy powered aviation. So anything that flies with an engine, I love. And uh, uh, the bigger, the better. I like military as well. Uh, I'm very familiar with military jets and stuff. If you want to talk, uh, I, uh, I will be more than happy to entertain uh, each other. What makes you consider learning about trauma counseling as a goal? I really wanted to be a counselor even back in college, but never had a chance to uh, to properly study, except some pastoral uh, counseling training. And I've done a lot of pastoral counseling. Uh, but over the years, uh, understanding more and more about paramedics and how they uh, so stressed, uh, I like to spend a little bit more time um, uh, specializing myself in trauma counseling, in particular to help first responders. That's why I, I decided to do traumatology. Uh, in traumatology as a subject, it's not very um, popular. There are not that many schools out there. So my current school is at Liberty University, which is one of the very few uh, university that offer trauma counseling as a degree. Usually it's a specialization. So uh, this one as a degree. So I'm actually spending three years learning trauma. So it's quite amazing. <laughs> so I will like Kropo Yip. I believe you have another question for Mr. Ip, right? Oh, yes, yes. Um, Mr. Ip, I would like to ask, has being an, a teacher or instructor in first aid helped you as a student, um, like working towards your doctor, and if so, how? Excellent. Like be, being in like the teacher's perspective and then under, like having the ability to like understand a teacher. Oh, very good question. I have to actually think about that. Now, first aid instruction are very different. Uh, it's mostly hands-on, lots of doing. Whereby what I'm studying right now is a lot of reading and processing in the head and to be able to uh, not so much a regurgitate, but to be able to repeat the concept uh, in, 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 in in a, in a paper fashion to be able to write it out and, and to process it logically. So it's, it's actually a very different style of education. Now, I am very honored to be able to say, I, I, I love to use my hands. I love to do things with my hands and I love to think on my feet. 
as a, as a paramedic. Uh, those are the skills that we don't, not a whole lot of people have. Uh, but at the same time, I'm very honored to be able to sit down and be able to uh, dissect a problem and to be able to logically work it out and then put it on paper. Uh, so th those are two different things. Uh, so I am not gonna draw relationship between the two. Uh, as a former high school and junior high teacher, it's actually quite interesting because when I was a teacher, uh, we're constantly looking at the student to make sure they're not cheating. But nobody at a doctorate level cheats. Not, well, very few of them anyways. And it's your own work. And it's very easily recognizable if you're not being honest. So it's a very different education style. So I'm not sure how I would draw a parallel or relationship between. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. Oh no, like your answer was like completely fair. I completely understand. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Yip. Um, it is my honor, always my honor to ask our guests the last question of the night. Um, our division take this question very seriously. So please answer that with your heart, truly. Um, what is your favorite ice cream? I don't know if I can answer that honestly and truly because uh, if I say I like this and uh, everybody will go there or like I'm not being fair to the ice cream itself. So, so you're going to answer a list of your favorite? Two. There are two ice cream that I absolutely love, but I like ice cream in general. But first of all, I did a I did read a study yesterday, uh, uh, three days ago. Uh, Americans love chocolate ice cream more than any other ice cream. The number two is vanilla, and anything after that, strawberry is number three. But strawberry, uh, the likability of strawberries, are uh, half of chocolate. So chocolate is the way to go. Uh, as a person, my favorite two ice cream is green tea and mango. Chocolate is number three. Sir Yip, uh, I, all those lists will come down to me later on. So thank you very much for providing a very comprehensive list. I appreciate that. <laughs> so you need to take me out. We are overdue between you and me to go out and talk. For sure, so, for sure, that will happen. <laughs> uh, hopefully soon. Thank you, thank you. Evening, Mr. Yip. Uh, we sincerely appreciate your answers to all the questions posed by our NCOs. Uh, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, yeah, I just wanna say the stress is, is a normal part of life. Phase it heads on, never, be afraid to ask for help and learn skills that helps you to distress now. And as you get older and becoming more and more mature, having more and more responsibilities, you will learn how to cope with them more properly. Do not be afraid to ask for help. And the CIS team is here to serve you. So use us. Thank you, Mr. Ip, uh, and for all that you do. Uh, happy Lunar New Year, Mr. Liu, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Lo. Uh, fantastic uh, Q&A session by our NCOs, and I personally learned a lot uh, this evening, especially uh, uh, no more Netflix or Kim's Convenience two hours before uh, bedtime. So uh, a big thank you to Mr. Ip uh, for this uh, wonderful presentation and for being our speaker during the Lunar New Year of the Ox, making this a uh, very auspicious year for all of us. As uh, 2021 will also be the 75th anniversary of Canada becoming a St. John Priory, and is the 110th anniversary for BC as a provincial St. John Council. We will continue to safely mark our double anniversary year with these very unique and engaging virtual events. Stay tuned as we are delighted to announce our next presenter for March 29th with Monsieur Philippe Souter, Council General of France, to celebrate and mark the Francophonie Month. So, brush up on your Francais, mes amis.
This concludes our speaker series tonight. Thank you again for joining us this evening. Again, wishing you all a happy and healthy Lunar New Year of the Ox. Stay well and have a great week, everyone. One St. John. Thank you.